vermaß großer Satz, okay? Every time I start speaking German, it just sounds so aggressive. Vermaß großer Satz! Jawohl! <lacht> Stop! You violated the law! Good morning, fellow mathematicians. Welcome back to another video. Um, Diophantine equation today, yet again. You really enjoyed the first day of my advent calendar. I did not think that you would like Diophantine equations this much, but you supposed you did. After this advent calendar video, someone on Twitter asked me to solve this Diophantine boy, and I supposedly got it right um, with the way of yeah how I solved it and the solutions. And he gave me a really short answer at the end, <laughs> which is quite ingenious, but a bit overkill. And, and we are going to go through my thought process, what I thought when I first solved it. And uh, yeah, then, then we are going to talk about his way. So yeah, Diophantine equation, we want to see if there are A and C is element of the positive and negative integers such that this equation right here is being satisfied. At first, what I did is I subtracted negative one to separate it. Okay, because geometric progression. Okay, um, it's when you see a Diophantine equation, first thing you want to do is to factor it in some way such that you can make use of divisibility, etc. Now, by subtracting this on both sides, we get a to the third power minus one. Maybe you can already see that this right here is quite powerful, is thus equal to 3c squared minus 3c. Also, what you could notice is that 3c is a common factor. That's one of the reasons why I subtracted 1, such that it's nicely separated. Meaning we're going to have 3c times c minus 1 on this side. Next up, like I said, geometric progression. For this, I want you guys to notice that if we have just a simple polynomial, okay, where k runs from 0 to n, in this case, of, um, yeah, I'm going to write it like this, a to the kth power is thus nothing other than a to the n plus 1 minus 1 over um, a minus 1. This should be right. Notice that our n is 2, okay, because we have a to the third power minus 1, so to get to the third power. Meaning, if we multiply both sides by a minus 1, we are going to talk about the roots in a minute, we are going to actually end up with this expression, okay, by just writing out, uh, out the summation of the geometric, uh, geometric progression, we are going to have a minus one, uh, it takes a bit of thinking, then we have a squared plus a plus one, being thus equal to 3c times c minus one. And now we can already talk about the first few solutions that come to mind, because on both sides we have Products of things. 3 is not equal to 0. Not going to talk about it. But we can make either of those sides go to 0 and then talk about the conditions. This is just bloody genius, okay? Um, yeah, I just love going for factorization and linear factors because it just works wonders in elementary number theory. Now, first thing we might want to look at is the, the roots of each and every linear factor right here. So c is equal to 0 makes this whole thing go to zero, okay? For c being equal to zero, we are going to get a minus one times a squared plus a plus one is equal to zero, okay? This is the first one. Now, this can definitely go to zero, okay? Th this is something that works because if we set a being equal to one, we are going to have our first pair of solutions that actually satisfies this Diophantine equation. Now, what about the second factor, a squared plus a plus one. Can this go to zero in the positive or negative integers? And now, if you use the quadratic formula on here or you just simply factor it yet again, you're going to get that it's going to be uh, something irrational. So we are going to have negative one half plus minus one quarter minus one. No, it's, it's complex. Both roots are complex. Yeah. Those are complex, definitely not part of the positive and negative integers. Doesn't work out. Okay. Next up is the next pair, okay? So we got rid that this thing can never go to zero in the positive or negative integers. What about z being equal to one? For z being equal to one, we are going to get the very same situation and we get that a must be equal to one. Those are two pairs of solutions to this Diophantine equation. 
And the thing is, those are the only ones. Now, let me elaborate a little bit more. You can do digit sum stuff and go for way more divisibility rules. You can divide both sides by a minus one and then you see that a squared plus a plus one must be divisible by, by three. But this is never possible. This is going to be irrational all the time if you set it equal to three times k because this overall must be equal to something out of the positive or negative integers yet again. It just doesn't work out. I do not want to elaborate on this because it's a whole lot of calculations and shit and it's just something that does not work out. So a squared plus a plus one can never be a multiple of three in the integers yet again with solution c and a being in the integers also. This is something that does not work out. But maybe an easier way to see that those are the only solutions that we have is to take a look at a to the third power if we were to interpret this as a polynomial. Okay, now we're doing a little bit of analytic number theory, putting it into the mix right here. Okay, we have a coordinate system. a to the third power would look as a polynomial just like this. Okay, oh, that's actually quite good. Hey, yeah, it's pretty good. Then we have 3c squared minus 3c plus 1. Okay, it's kind of shifted to somewhere. It's a bit stretched. It's kind of shifted in the right direction, meaning it's going to be, I don't know, something like um, this right here. Okay, now what I want you to notice, it should look something like this. You use Desmos, I don't know. Point is a polynomial with a degree three is going to grow way harder at some point than our three C squared minus three C plus one, our polynomial of the second degree, meaning this was the only intersection point which is exactly at c being equal to 1 and a being equal to 1 and other than that there are no intersection points simply because a to the third power grows way harder. This probably happens at 2 or something so we get 8 when we have 2 right here and then we have this is 12 minus 6 plus 1 is going to give us 7 yeah. At the next positive integer it's going to grow way harder and that's it okay it's going to become unbounded somewhere <laughs> I don't care and it just doesn't work out so yeah using analytic number theory here and you can probably prove it also by induction that it's always the case that a to the third power is going to be strictly greater for a being greater than 2 than yeah um, let's say 3a squared minus 3a plus 1 or c I don't care now this was the first part we have found those solutions, but what about, you can maybe already see it in the graph, the solutions when a is negative. Are there no negative solutions for a? No, I should you not, because if we interpret this as a polynomial, yet again, you see that a to the third power, if we plug in for example a negative one, is going to give us negative one. It can spit out negative values, but this can never spit out negative values. It just doesn't work out because it lies above our x-axis. It's a polynomial of the second degree. There's never going to be um, negative solutions right here. No, no matter what number you plug in, no negative solutions. Then you could ask another question. Well, what about, it's a Diophantine equation, you can just completely go to analytic number theory. What about this half? We, we have only talked about the positive branch of our C's. What about the negative branch? Well, there's a symmetry axis going right through the minimum. What you can do is take a look at the Diophantine equation for the negative branch basically being equal to 3c squared if you plug in or if you do the transformation c goes to negative c okay negative c squared is just c squared then positive 3c because negative and negative becomes positive plus one and yeah you are going to arrive basically at the same solutions with the only difference that this c must be equal to, to negative one, but we did a substitution, let c go to negative c, so that's the only solution. Those are the only two solutions that we have, okay? Um, yeah, those are the only solutions. And please notice that zero, zero is not a solution, simply because it's not, we have uh, decomposed it into linear factors. Now this was the long answer from Papa Flemmy, divisibility and shit, analytic and um, elementary number theory, but there's one uh, stronger thing you can do and this was um, OPs, 
comment about how he solved it or how he saw it somewhere, I don't care. Maybe you have heard of Fermat's last theorem. Fermat's großer Satz, okay? Every time I start speaking German, it just sounds so aggressive. Fermat's großer Satz! Jawohl! It's, <laughs> it's a really big sentence. <laughs> that was a shitty translation. Now, Fermat's last theorem says that if we have a to the nth power plus b to the nth power equals to c to the nth power, there are no solutions for any n being greater or equal to 3, except for the trivial solutions. Trivial solutions meaning 0, 0, 0, 1. So if one of those parts uh, goes to 0, so trivial solutions would be 0, 0, 0, or 0, 1, 1, or whatsoever, all those permutations. Those are the trivial solutions. Now, if you were to do a substitution, let b be equal to c plus 1, it should be. Then if you plug all of those in, and when n is equal to 3, you're going to arrive with this exact Diophantine equation, and you see there are no solutions except for the trivial ones, which are right here. It's just what it is. I hope you did enjoy this video. If you did, please like, subscribe, and recommend channel if you like. If you want to support channel a bit more, buy the features I created. If you want me to do more Diophantine equations, elementary number theory stuff, feel free letting me know. I would be glad to do so. And well, what should I say? Thank you for all your support. And up until the next video, have a Papa wearing glasses day. <laughs> Ciao.